Dowdy, uh, welcome. And we're going to, I'm going to pass over to you now. I mean, I hope you heard everything that was was being said there by both uh, Gabrielle and, and Kojo. I mean, I think one of the interesting features of that they both pointed to was the sort of power of a strong narrative around unity and peace, um, mm -hmm. perhaps against slightly different backdrops. In the Kenyan case, against a sort of strong anti-Western sentiment that, that has been building, but in Ghana, perhaps slightly differently drawn. Um, how, do, how do you see that? But also, you'll have your views very much on, on the power of citizen <laughs> engagement in, in, in elections. Over to you. Thank you. Um, I'd like to take the first um, half to explain the context in which we are operating in, in Kenya, in my interpretation, and maybe the second half to explain a little bit of what we did with Shahidi with other partners um, in the Wichaguzi platform. Um, but first of all, I'd like to accept the congratulations of Kojo on behalf of Kenya. <laughs> and I'll, I'll take that from you. Thank you. Um, Talking a little bit about the backdrop of these elections, there's some things I think that are significant. Um, the strength of institutions has been mentioned before, and in particular what we're talking about is the independence of these institutions from the executive branch of government. The Electoral Commission, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, with Chairman Isaac Hassan, has really claimed a lot of the space that was you know, laid out for it in the Constitution, for example, they are the ones who decided that would have elections in March when the politicians were daily dallying on the date. The other institution that um, you know was more or less trying to show its independence from the executive branch was the police. So the new Inspector General of Police, you know, David Kimayo, went through a competitive selection process and you know has gone out of his way to stress his independence from the executive branch. And the third institution, and the one which is probably most successful in demonstrating its independence of the judiciary, through the Chief Justice Willy Mutonga. And I think Kenya is one of the few countries in the world where we actually advertise the position of Chief Justice in the newspaper. Anyone with the right qualifications could apply, and through a very public um, um, process. And yeah, so those three um, institutions, the Electoral Commission, the Police, and the Judiciary, demonstrating their independence from the executive branch of government. Sticking with the executive branch, um, another significant thing for Kenya, not seen a lot on the continent, in this election we had for the first time two presidents, two former presidents, or one current president, soon to be former president, voting in another president. So we had you know, pictures of an ex-president and an outgoing president going to the ballot box to vote in their successor, which was another powerful picture. Moving away from the strength of institutions, the engagement of civil society, and what was significant here was the emergence of umbrella bodies. So rather than having you know, many, many organizations running off in different directions, we had, for example, ELOP, the Election Monitors Group, which is the umbrella body of all domestic election observation. And they, you know, they were able to demonstrate their strength in numbers in carrying out things such as parallel vote tabulation. On the conflict prevention side, you had organizations such as PeaceNet and the WIANO platform, again, an umbrella body of civil society organizations sharing strategy, working in connection with each other to ensure that they have you know, a positive impact on the electorate process. But perhaps most significantly, you know, the engagement of the electorate and citizens itself. And there are a couple of things that are significant here. One of them is that you know you have a whole section of Kenyans electorate who have a history of their vote meaning something. If you voted for the first time in 2002, you voted out on the dictator who had been in power for 20 plus years. If you voted again in 2007, you begin to understand how important every vote counts from the small margin of victory. So coming into this election, you've got a whole section of the electorate who believe, who have seen the evidence that their election, their vote actually counts for something. And that was very significant. And I think this election has just reinforced that. You know, the, we heard earlier that the gap between, you know, 50 percent was 4,000 to 8,000 votes. That's less than one stream at one polling station. So people begin to see the importance of every single vote. Connected to that, however, now talking about the election itself, is the paradox of the choices made at the ballot box. So we saw again in Kenya where at the local and you know, sub-national level, 
voters voted for change. Issue-based politics voted for radical change um, against the status quo in many instances. Even against the big ethnic question, we had a Kenyan Asian elected in Meru. Uh, you know, we had a Kamba elected, a Kenyan Kamba elected in Busia, you know, on the other side of the country. We had a Kenyan of Somali origin elected in Lower Nyanza. We had a Kenyan of Kikuyu origin elected in Lamu on the coast. And we had our first ever Maasai uh, female woman MP. So you see a lot of choices for radical change at the grassroots level. But then, although we had eight presidential candidates, the choice at the top was more or less for the status quo between two of the biggest players of the last decade of Kenya's history. So this paradox is, is very interesting. Connected to that, we have, you know, when we look at the question of violence in 2007, it's been, you know, framed many times as, you know, violence around identity. What makes you a Kenyan? What's your primary, um, what's the thing that defines you most as Kenyan? But many of us feel that it is also violence of relevance. If you are a young, unemployed man in Kenya, you're largely irrelevant in conversations about nationhood, statehood, ETC. All of a sudden, through violence, you have the whole country and indeed the whole world listening to you, looking to you, and your relevance. You know, no one can dismiss you anymore. And we begin to see in 2007, 2008, you know, the, the largely young men who are out on the streets going against, you know, the pleas of their so-called political masters in the violence. But now with this, you know, engagement of the electorate and citizens, we're beginning to see other ways in which people can remain relevant in the political process. I just thought I'd um, throw that out there. In terms of what we did um, specifically as Ushahidi, as you heard, you know, we grew out of the post-election violence in, in Kenya in 2008. And since then, in the last five years, the platform has been used 40,000 times in 159 countries. It's been translated into 30 different languages. And we've done election. It's been used in elections in over 40 different countries around the world, including um, in Ghana in December. So the, the platform really has gotten global coverage. But we are well aware that our roots were in Kenya. And with a Kenyan election, we had the chance to engage all over again. So we came up with a platform called Uchaguzi, which is a Swahili word for election. And the aim of Uchaguzi was simple, to help Kenya have a free, fair, peaceful, and credible general election. And our strategy for that was to increase transparency and accountability in the electoral process by returning citizens to the center of the election process. And as we've heard before, you know, we're trying to get Kenyans to think of elections as a permanent and recurring cycle and process, you know, in which election day is just one event. So the whole election and the election cycle is a permanent process that goes on and on. So Uche Guzi was trying to do three things in particular. The first was to collect as much data from as many people as possible about what they felt was significant about the election. So our call to action was, if you see anything that you feel is significant about the election, please send that information to us. Second thing we would do is take that information once we've collected it through a process to establish its credibility, what we call the verification process. This was done largely with partners on the ground. And once we've established the credibility of the information, we'll do the third thing, which is escalated for response to the relevant body. If it was an electoral issue, escalated to the electoral commission, if it was a security issue, escalated to law enforcement, or if it was an issue that needed a first responder, escalated to the Kenya Red Cross. We collected over 5,100 messages in the week of the election. From these messages, we were able to collect over 4,900 reports, and 2,700 of those we were able to verify with our partners on the ground. And this was all centered around the Situation Room um, that we hosted here at the High Up in Nairobi, where I'm sitting right now. Looking ahead to the challenges, I think what we've seen is, you know, um, another look at the institutions again and the strength of the institutions. Uh, before the election, the three institutions that I've mentioned before, the IEBC, the Inspector General of the Police, and the Judiciary were all ranking over 80% uh, you know, credibility amongst the Kenyan public. Kenyans felt that these institutions were largely credible and I think it was, that was a positive thing that we got to the electoral process with people believing in the institutions that were going to manage the entire electoral process. Since then, we've seen the IEBC take a big hit in its credibility, and the police 
beginning to get ahead in its credibility and, of course, now all eyes on the judiciary. Two institutions, however, which you know the, the jury is still out on is the media, as we've heard before, and whether they were too complacent or perhaps too quiet in their, in their quest for the peace narrative to challenge some of these um, decisions that some of the action and decisions that we saw the Electoral Commission do. And of course, the other institution that's heavily under the spotlight is political parties. And you know, we're still having the question whether we really have any real political parties in Kenya. Um, looking, taking a step back from this election and looking at it through you know, the historical context, you know, political transitions throughout Kenya's history have always have been followed and many times formed by you know, violence usually along ethnic lines. And this goes, this goes all the way back to the Congress of Berlin, to the fight for independence, and an election since independence. So we're beginning to see that, you know, each time we're getting a little bit better at this process. We hope that 2007 may be a blip. And, you know, we hope that the strength of the institutions in 2003, you know, uh, sorry, 2013, will make this different from what we saw five years ago. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Dowdy. That's great. Okay. <laughs>